Baking is the process of generating or transferring data required for texturing or rendering from a source mesh to a target mesh. Due to the complex nature of the process, baking is typically not performed in the modeling application itself, but in dedicated applications. Incompatibilities and iterations between the modeling and the baking application are a huge pain point, as baking can often be a hit and miss problem. Several complicated issues like baking flat details onto surfaces with average normals remain unsolved, often requiring brute force measures to solve the problem. With Instalot's powerful baking technology, these pain points have finally been solved. Additionally, Instalot's baker is not only a singular process, but it can be used as an artist tool by allowing features such as easily adding additional shading detail onto existing tangent space normal maps. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to painlessly solve complex baking issues with Instalod for Autodesk Maya. In this example, we're going to take a look at baking with Instalod. And so what you can see is we have a high poly cube with some cylinders and extrusions off the side. And we have a low poly uh, with all average normals. And we also have a cage here with extra edge loops in it, which is going to allow us to control the skewing. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So first off, the first thing to look at is our naming. And this is very common with the naming is that you have a suffix that says underscore low and underscore high. And as long as the beginning names match, then they will match up as well. So if we had this as cube and this one as box, for example, these things wouldn't bake correctly or look for each other. So we want to make sure these names are correct and we can use the uh, suffix here to change it to whatever we want. And we also have source mesh format for our high poly. So this is the high poly mesh name and then high and then anything after it. And this also goes for the cage as well. The cage has its name down here for, for what it looks for to find the cage for this cube low poly. So cube low poly is looking for cube high and cube cage. And so if we select all these things, we're gonna be able to bake them. But there's a few settings we wanna make sure that we handle first. And that's all dependent on the tangent spaces that we're looking to bake for and the real-time application that we're, our end result model is going to. So first off, if we take a look at bake output, we're gonna bake a 2K texture with uh, times two super sampling. And we're gonna bake a tangent space normal and a custom material texture. So a color, a color map from the high poly. Now, what to look at uh, down and change for our tangent space is down here, right under this tangent space tab. And so we have um, normalized tangent space per fragment, and we want to check that for baking inside of Maya. And if I highlight it, I get a nice little tooltip that says uh, for Maya, we want this on, and for Unreal Engine, we want this for Unreal Engine and Unity, we want this off. Um, and the one right above that, by normal per fragment, we get the tooltip to pop up and it says for exporting to Unreal, we want it on, Unity off, Maya off. So we can set this up depending on where we want our end result to be. And we're showing you think this in Maya right now, so I'm gonna have this checkbox so that we have the right tangent basis for Maya. And one last thing is under the Setup tab, we have Recalculate Tangents. And this is for the MCT tangent space. And so if we highlight this, it will tell you all about it. So what we're doing is we're forcing the tangent recalculation to make sure the tangents match MCT space. That way, whatever engine you're going to, if it's using MCT space, all of this stuff will match and the output you have in here will look exactly the same inside the engine and you're guaranteed good bake results. So let's go back over this bake tab and hit bake. So we've got our tangent space set up, we've got our naming set up and Let's take a look at re the results here. So very quickly have a bake. Let's turn on textures. And so now I have a very nice clean bake. I have no skewing. I have no seams along the edges or, or pillowing around the, the edges here from, from the normal map bake. So everything looks really, really nice and clean with our bake. And a big part of this is that cage that I mentioned before. And so one of the really great things about the Instalod Baker is that your low poly and your cage can have different topology. So 
if we look at this cage, it has a lot of extra edge loops in it, and this is controlling the skewing. So a lot of the times, a normal bake, bake workflow would be that you could bake two normal maps, you could bake one with average normals and then one with all hard uh, edges, and then you could mask between the two normal maps, so you're baking two normal maps and you're doing a lot of stuff by hand. So that's a very destructive workflow. Uh, another method would be using like some skew painting or some other um, features. And again, kind of destructive in the sense that if you change your UVs or you rebake, you can start to lose that, that information and have to do it all over again. But with this, but with this inside of Insulod, we're able to add extra edges where we need them to control our shading. And we can add as many as we want. And we can also have a different cage for every single different low poly that we have uh, for the bakes. And everything will work out great. You also notice that the cage was not pushed out manually to envelop the entire high poly. That is already covered by the outray and inray length and percentage uh, right there at the top of the bake menu. And if you want to push that in or out further, uh, you can do that right there with that percentage. So I'll just zero this, these back out so they line up and all of this will, will work. And just to show you what those results are with and without the cage, if I take this low and the high and I go back over to Instalod, and I'm not, I don't have the cage selected right now, so it's not gonna use the cage. And we have this option right here called average normals, and what this will do is if we're not using a cage, it will average the normals on the low poly. So let's bake this first without averaging the normals of the low poly, and then with, and then we'll show you with the cage again at the very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake. And very quickly, we should have a, a, a new result, but we're gonna have errors in this one. And what we have in this one is Oh, it looks like it averaged the normals for me. Oh, because we have the average normals on the low poly, I now I have skewing here because our low poly is all averaged, my mistake. So uh, we have skewing here, and this is a, a bad result. We're gonna have to go and clean all of this up. We're gonna have to change things. We're gonna go have to fix this. We're gonna either gonna have to add extra topology here to, to control the skewing in the low poly or something like that. So that's with the average normals and if we take the low poly and I go ahead and unlock the normals and set everything to hard edged or let's just do soft and hardened that way the trying the triangles in the center aren't hard edged and we select low and high and go ahead and bake now this one should give us a lot of seams at, and pillowing at the edges because the normals are actually uh, projecting an and getting on top of each other and doubling up. So the normals of this polygon right here are shooting straight up and these ones are shooting straight off to the right and they're actually picking up uh, more of that curve than they should on both of these. So you have a seam. And the other way is if the high poly was above the low poly a little bit, you would actually miss the high poly in that section between the two hard, hard uh, normals and you would get a seam there because it's missing. So here we're getting double double bevels basically, and the other way would be missing. So if I take this, and we'll just show it with the average normals. So this one's gonna to average the normals on the low poly, just like I did uh, previously in that, that mistake where I baked with the average normals from the very beginning uh, to show this the errors and the, this doing it wrong. So now we've cleaned up some of the the corners still a little messy around all of these um, due to the the on wrap and not splitting splitting the edges uh, with the hard edges but we have skewing here and we have those seams here right so again with Instalod we have the ability to uh, go ahead and average all of these normals use this custom cage to control our skewing and then we have our high poly. So again, if I select all of these and bake them, we're gonna get a very nice clean result um, with no skewing, no uh, missed edges, and no pillowing at those corners. And again, we get to stitch all of our UVs together so we don't have to split our, all of our UVs up and we're able to control our seams a lot better when we go in texture. 
So a lot of benefits to using this baker. Again, very quick, very fast, and very, very clean here. So hopefully that gives you a great look into this baking and how simple and quick it is and a lot of the new features that, that are unavailable anywhere else. Thank you.